Almost everything we buy today is packed in plastic. In 2017, 140 million tons of it were produced worldwide, including polystyrene, better known in its expanded form as styrofoam, a cheap, disposable article from the chemistry lab. They have amazing performance attributes, but unfortunately, these are products that are used for a short duration of time and then spend the rest of their life in landfills. And of course, sometimes they make it into our environment and they do not biodegrade. Protecting nature and using its powers to do so. That was the goal of college friends Eben Bayer and Gavin McIntyre. The two of them worked together on several private projects, including this self-sufficient cabin in the forests of New York State. When uh, Eben was originally constructing this cabin, I had the opportunity to assist by putting on a component of the roof, which is actually composed predominantly of plastic foam. Yeah, yeah and Gavin uh, did the most dangerous job, <laughs> which was standing on the boom of the crane and pushing the panels up. Yeah. And it was in their professional lives that the two men went on to discover a way of combating disposable plastic using a cost-efficient and natural alternative. The forest for me has always been a source of inspiration and a place of peace, and it was part of the inspiration behind the concept of using mycelium as a binder to grow materials. They had the idea during their last semester as mechanical engineering students in the Inventors Studio course run by lecturer Bert Swersey. <laughs> a fabulous mentor for us that told us not to focus on nonsense. I told him about three quarters of the way into the semester that I thought that they were doing nonsense. I want them to invent something. They weren't inventing anything. I want radical innovations supported by technology that will make life better, you know, for a billion people, <laughs> for example. Not an easy mission, but the inspiration came from nature. Eben Bayer was raised on a farm in Vermont. His parents used to boil maple syrup there. While shoveling some wood for the fire, he made a momentous observation. It was mycelium, or the root structure of mushrooms, actually growing on wood chips, uh, kind of holding them together in these stretchy tendrils that stuck in my mind. A fungus that worked like a natural glue. Not the fruiting body that grows out of the soil, but the actual fungus beneath it, the so-called mycelium a root-like network of cells shaped like threads. And it was later in college when Gavin and I teamed up that that image came back to me and we thought we might use that natural phenomenon as a growable glue. We've leveraged natural materials as humans for centuries at this point. And it was really interesting that the kingdom of fungi, one of the most diverse kingdoms that we have within nature, has been completely unexplored and untapped from a materials perspective. So that really provided us with a whole open field to begin exploration. The engineering students were now venturing into the world of biology. They bought fungal cultures and, using the simplest means, created some initial prototypes for building insulation materials. Despite several beginner's mistakes, these turned out to be very promising. Hmm. Have I ever seen anything like this? No. It seemed to be unique? Yes. Potentially patentable? Yes. Um, cost effective? Absolutely. You gotta do this. <laughs> they filed the patent application for their invention. And right after graduating, Eben Bayer and Gavin McIntyre founded their own company. Today, it has 45 employees, and with the help of the mushroom mycelium, they're growing products that can, for instance, replace packaging plastics. In order to grow mycelium materials, we begin with locally sourced agricultural residue. Agricultural residue gains a whole new value here. Depending on the material property required, the woody remnants of hemp plants, corn husks, or cotton seed hulls are the basic ingredients. We pasteurize or sterilize these materials and then introduce a small amount of mycelium. The mycelium gets mixed into the agricultural residue and then placed in a growth tray. At this stage, the mass is still fully malleable. 
Over the course of just four to six days, the mycelium grows, digesting some of the farm waste while binding the rest of it together. The structure that has grown inside the mold is then dried and the heat prevents further growth. The substrate residue and the mycelium glue now provide a material with properties similar to styrofoam. Our mycelium materials are healthy for the planet because they're strong and durable when used as a packaging material, but they're grown with a fraction of the energy of conventional plastics. And at the end of this material's useful life, you can actually compost this in your garden. Uh, it turns into a nutrient, not a pollutant. While their business with packaging and insulation continues to expand, Eben Bayer and Gavin McIntyre have already developed more ideas. Mushroom mycelium as a substitute for leather, for example. The technologies to harness mushrooms for production are now in place, and they're patent protected. Since we've created a new domain in material science, patents have become incredibly important to our organization, allowing us to focus on our ongoing research efforts while extending the reach of our products through licensing partnerships internationally. With their packaging invention, Eben Bayer and Gavin McIntyre really have gone back to nature, and their idea definitely has growth potential.